Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am back. Uh, this is Dr. Samaria M. Colbert. I'm the founder of Kingdom Creative Counseling. I'm a licensed therapist. I'm a published author. I am an entrepreneur, private practice owner, and I use faith-based principles to bring about lasting change. So let's get it started, y'all. Today, we're going to talk about uh, a tough subject, a painful subject, and that subject is betrayal. The trail and the subtitle is how do you deal with your spiritual judas everybody they say is going to have a spiritual judas at some point in time and it can be very painful and so i want to talk to you a little bit about that we're talking about what is betrayal we're going to talk about why someone betrays you and then how do you heal are y'all ready i am ready okay and give me one minute i just realized i didn't turn my phone on hold on so uh, I didn't put it on vibrate. So let's talk about this for a minute. So betrayal, watch this, is probably one of the most painful things that you could ever go through. One of the, I say it was the only thing, I say it was one of the most painful things. It is the pain that most human beings will experience. Believe it or not, the things that you are experiencing, believe it or not, are common to man. That simply means that you are not the only one in life who has experienced it, it doesn't take away the pain, no less. However, it is the mark, you're ready for this one, of the believer. It's the mark of the believer. If you live long enough, you're going to experience betrayal from individuals that you would have never expected. It's gonna get tight. But the process is to, to, to state my case here so that we can usher you in to a place of healing, okay? That is the goal. Betrayal is, is hard, it's painful, all right? Betrayal is not really betrayal. Well, we're gonna define it in a minute, but it's not really betrayal unless it comes from individuals that you are once close to. You can be hurt by someone um, that you're not close to. You can feel pain but it's not really considered betrayal unless there was a relationship, okay? Unless there was a relationship, all right? Just go with me here. Uh, I'm gonna make my, 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 my claim clear and I'm gonna use scriptures. And as I always, uh, or tell people quite frequently, have a relationship with the Bible for yourself, write down these scriptures and, and, and begin to meditate on them and look them up, okay? So I said something really, really different. I said, it's the mark of the believer. And I know some may be like, what? What you mean it's the mark of the believer? Here's the thing. Read Matthew 10, 21. It says in Matthew 10, 21, let's again, let me give you pre the prefix. Um, Jesus is preparing his disciples for his dissension. Okay, for his, he's going to go back to heaven. He tells them greater work shall he does, but, he, but God never sends you someplace Okay, and he never he never sends you off into anything, ministry, business, without first preparing you. And he starts giving these warning signs. And he says, a brother will betray brother. Look at the relationship here. Brother, brother to death. And a father will be, betray his own child. And children will rebel against their own parents and cause them to be killed. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you. Don't, don't click off. Don't turn off. What I am saying is that, again, sometimes as believers, we will experience betrayal from people. Look at, look at the relationship here, brother, father, parents. Everybody that's family ain't really family. Can, can, I, can, can we talk? Sometimes the people that will show you the most respect, dignity, just love, are people that don't even share the same last name with you, that you're not even related. I, I ain't gonna tell you my business. I could literally go anywhere. And most of the time people generally respect me. Even if you don't know me, you generally show me respect, but I can go around people that knew me all of my life and they will have the most trashiest things to say about me that are not true. Betrayal. Betrayal. Are you ready for this? This this type, but we we it's gonna get good. We get to the healing part. I'm setting, I'm I'm setting it up here. I'm setting it up here. Okay. The purpose of my live today or my teaching today is not to give you a strategy to avoid the pain of betrayal. 
Okay, there's some things that are just unavoidable. I'm not telling you this is what we're going to do and I'm get, trying to get you to avoid it. That's not what I'm trying to do. It is rather to comfort those who have experienced it or are experiencing it. Because if you don't, if you allow betrayal and the, the, the nastiness of people who betray you can cause you to feel so discouraged and bitter and angry, if you don't have a conscious decision to say, I'm going to heal from this, this is not going to define who I am, I'm going to get better from this, I am not what they said about me, if you don't make that conscious decision, you will stay stuck in a place and, and relinquish your control over to somebody who is secretly jealous and envious of you. Mm. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching already. I know I am. I don't care nobody. <laughs> Woo, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We thank you, Holy Spirit. So let's, let's start by defining betrayal before we talk into why. Because I, you know, as a, as a, just as a, uh, someone who loves to study, one of the things I love to study also, I, you know, as y'all know, I, I was talking with the Bible, study the Bible, but it's fine. But I love to study the human behavior. And I had to ask myself, why do people, like you can say, yeah, someone's behavior is odd. You try to figure it out <laughs> and there is an answer. But before we go into why, I'm, we're just going to define um, betrayal a little bit more, okay? Because I'm giving you some definition. Most people, you know what it is, but I'm giving you some definitions you may not have necessarily considered, okay? Betrayal is the act of intentional intentional deceiving, exposing, or attempts to mislead someone you are close to or previously trusted you. It is intentional. And I'm gonna talk to you, uh, sometimes when, when someone has betrayed you, they will try to pretend as if they don't know, what do you mean, gaslighting? But it's always intentional. It's always intentional. You cannot accidentally betray somebody. You were intending to do that. You just didn't think you'd get caught. Those are people who betray. Now, I'm, you know, you, if you listen to this and you were betrayed, you, you get you get betrayed, y'all. Me, okay. Betrayal, technically, I said this before, must come from someone that you trusted. They took your trust and violated it through betrayal, and this is why it is so painful. If your supervisor that you don't technically like anyway uh misleads you or something like that you may be hurt by it, but you ain't really trust old girl or the brother in the first place you understand what i'm saying i'm talking about when somebody that, that knew you and they knew the quality of your character and they had pieces of your heart and they didn't value it that's painful so, Remember, I said I'm reading. No, I had I wrote notes, and sometimes I, I talk ahead of my notes, you know. So strangers can hurt you, but but it's technically again not considered betrayal. I said that, okay. Betrayal has to come from someone you had a relationship with. Betrayal is also the act of intentionally causing someone pain. Betrayal is the act of of causing pain to a person you trusted someone that put hopes in you and someone that had um, the best intentions. You ever had someone that you never, like I've had, like I'll, I'll just tell you, my, I'm not gonna tell you all my business. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna speak in general terms. I've had the people that betrayed me, right? I had no real ill will in my heart towards them. Like I never said anything or thought really negative things about them. I never said, mm. I never was jealous of them. I, my, my actions of, of just giving of myself came from a pure place. Wasn't trying, I was trying, wasn't trying to get nothing back, wasn't trying to get kudos, wasn't trying to get a good hug and you so wonderful, Samaria. I just was being me. Uh, betrayal is also the act of failing to honor a promise or a principle. Betrayal is also when you expose, you have been exposed to the enemy by someone you once trusted. Betrayal also means to be unfaithfully and determined over to the enemy, expose them to, uh, to harm and to violate their trust. I just say that, y'all. You, you, y'all know what I mean. The biblical, also the biblical definition of betrayal is to prove faithlessness, treacherous, 
to be treacherous, which is extreme danger, as to trust to be falsely accused and to be deceived. You ever thought, you know, I ain't never done nothing to y'all. I never, all I did was live my best life. What I ever did to you to deserve that? Betrayal. All right, let's talk. We're going to read Psalms 55, 13. The New King James Version says, this is David talking now. David, David puts it so eloquently into words. He said, but it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, my acquaintance. We took counsel together and we walked to the house of God together and you betrayed me. These are the people that have prayed, you have prayed with. You, you, they sat down and wiped your tears and you wiped their tears. They went shout church and shouting together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shout, God gonna bless us. People that saw you at your roughest, but saw you at your best and vice versa. People that you would have never thought would even go there. And they went there betrayal it's gonna get better rock, rock with me okay now uh let's go to psalms um, uh psalms 41 give me one minute here y'all i'm gonna find it in my in my uh my bible here my virtual bible <laughs> psalms 41 starting at the fifth verse verse let's look at what david who has experienced betrayal says david said my enemies speak evil of me they say when will you die and his name when will he die and his name perish these are people that once knew you wishing and waiting and hoping that you die they are waiting. I know it's getting tight, y'all, but I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm making my plane, my, 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 my uh, position plain here. People that, uh, who, that you once trusted are speaking behind closed doors, waiting for you to fail. Let me, let me, let me just give you this advance advance notice here just just so we are, just so we are very clear they can want it they can wish it they can talk about it they can get behind closed doors with their kahunas and and their and their friends and and tell you and and, and wait and pray against you guess what no weapon formed against you it's going to prosper. It ain't going to work. They're wishing and they're hoping it's all in vain. Because when God is on your side, he's going to make it all right. I gave you that one for free. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. And, and that's uh, verse 6, David. We said Psalms 41. We had verse 6 now. And if he comes to see me, he speaks lies. Betrayers are lying on you. They just are. His heart gathers iniquity to itself. When he goes out, he tells it. All those who hate me, come on, your betrayers who once used to love you. They say, oh, I love you. I'm rocking with you. I love you, girl. I love you. I love you, boy. You're my homeboy. I love you. They hate you and whisper together against you. Remember I said last time, liars always need an audience, but the truth can stand all by itself. Mm -hmm. Against me, they devise their hurt. Verse eight of the 41st verse of Psalm, an evil disease, they say, clings them. They are waiting for you to get COVID. Oh, I shouldn't say what the, uh, what uh, YouTube, because it'll block me, but they waited for you to get that uh, disease. Or when you got it, for those who had it, they are upset that you're still here listening to this podcast. Ain't that something? 
And now that he lies down, so let me read it. And the evil disease, they say, clings to him. And now that he lies down, he will rise up no more. Ain't this something? This is in the Bible, y'all. This is, listen, this, this is this is why I love the Bible. It gets juicy. It tells you human behavior. Watch this. But listen, 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 listen. Then he goes to Psalm 41, verse 9. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted. What? My own, that's betrayal. He's telling you who he's referring to. Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread. You, they was in your house. They was eating your food. They stayed in your guest room. Come on here. They, 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 they was in your car. You understand what I'm saying? They was borrowing your money that you gave to them. <laughs> you know, they was in your stuff. They even said they ate my bread who lifted up his heel against me. What does that mean? He lifted up his, his agenda to plot against me. But you were mad when you was eating my bread. Wasn't mad when you was in my house. Wasn't mad when you was asking me, can you borrow? Can you buy? Can you, can you? They weren't mad then. We're going to talk about why they betrayed you, okay? It's going it's to make sense in a minute. But you, O oh Lord, be merciful for me and raise me up that I may repay them. For this I know you are well pleased with me, but my enemy does not triumph over me. Verse 12, as for me, you uphold me in my integrity. So I'm going to give you this for free again. Maintain your integrity. Don't, don't maintain your integrity. They're not going to triumph over you. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Maintain your integrity. And I know I'm going to pass the, the verses that I said. Okay. And set me before your face forever. And he will. See, God hears what your betrayers are saying behind closed doors. That's why the Bible says we can give an account for every idle word, which includes what we think, what we say, what we spread. Rumors and lies trying to assassinate people's character. Blessed be the Lord, O oh God, verse 13, for everlasting to everlasting. I love, and amen to amen, amen to amen. I love how David, even when he was going through the most painful emotional things, even like uh, people physically coming after him, he knew how to praise God. And if you know, if you read through the life of David, I mean, with uh, God, so when you go through, always put your thoughts on God. So he would, uh, David would chronicle or detail the things that he was going through, but then he would always bring it back to the goodness of God and what God is getting ready to do. And if you look at David's life, his en enemies always, he had enemies coming against him over and over again, but they never prevailed. I'm just making my case plain. I'm not, I'm not here to make you feel more painful. I'm making my place, my, 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 my space plain here because we're going to go through, we're going to talk about healing, okay? So let's talk about why people betray you, okay? Why people betray you. That's why I got the term, we get the term spiritual Judas. If you, if you, if you are obviously a Christian and you love God and you hear the word betrayal and you uh, um, automatically think of uh, someone in the Bible uh, and who was assimilated, associated, or you would assimilate the word betrayal. What well, Judas is is the is the guy. He is he is the guy. Okay, so remember, we're gonna set this up. Okay, we're talking about your spirit, spiritual Judas. And I have to say this: if Jesus had a Judas, okay, someone had that betrayed him. I know it's tough, it's tight, but it's right. If Jesus had a Judas, come on now. It, it, it's an indication that if Jesus had a Judas. You are in good company and it's not something abnormal if you have a Judas. I mean, Jesus, the savior of the world, had a Judas, okay? Now, Judas now is a spirit of betrayal, okay? Again, hence the subtitle, how to deal with your spiritual Judas, okay? Remember, betrayal, betrayers, people who betray you, they always have an underlying motive. I think in one of the last live and also my blog that's on my website my blog blog i say that because when i'm speaking in the in the into the microphone the vlog and blog uh, blog sound almost similar okay but my blog um uh, i said you want to ask yourself what is what is the motive behind this individual what what why are they really doing this and and and, and don't go to them because they're not gonna you know most of they're not gonna give you a true and real answer but you want to go to the father to God and he will reveal the true motives. Okay. The Holy Spirit leads into all truth. So betrayers always have a motive. Always. 
It doesn't have my accent. Like I said, it's not just now when you <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you when you try to confront them, they will say, Oh, it's just a misunderstanding. They, they will explain their lies and their deceit and their scams out to a misunderstanding. Okay, but they never misunderstanding. It is what they intentionally tried to do. And like I said, they just they just didn't int oh <laughs> they just didn't intend on getting caught. So that was my Google guy. Y'all see me jump. <laughs> For those who didn't hear that, I, you probably did. I don't know. I had my my Google talks. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> so was in my house. Anyway, y'all, excuse me, but I had one of those things that you talked to it, it just randomly started talking. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna keep that right in there because I don't know how to edit nothing. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, something about Judas. Okay. <laughs> well, it's okay. So they, they always have a motive. Okay. And then when you try to confront them, they uh they will pretend it's oh, it's just a misunderstanding at some in some responses. It's just a misunderstanding. Or they will try to place blame on someone else. It was it was it was someone else's fault. Okay. Now Judas didn't do this, but I'm I'm telling you from this from the beginning, you know. Um, they will they will try to place blame on you or someone else. It was your fault. You didn't hear me, you didn't get my message. You some some they will all they won't when someone is, is, is in that root of betrayal and they're not truly going to be honest, they will find a way to explain themselves away as to why they did what they did. Okay. And it'll always something that makes it, it doesn't, it makes them, it, it doesn't, it try to, they try to put themselves in a position where it's not as bad as, as, as it really is. Now I would never do that. Even though technically we got you with receipts, like you understand what I'm saying? So just be aware of that. I mean, we say everyone will have a Judas. Okay. So let's talk about who Judas is. Judas Iscariot. Now, if I pronounce that wrong, just go with me. Okay. He was one of the original disciples. We know that. Okay. I'm setting it up here. He saw Jesus at his best and he saw Jesus at his worst. So that simply means when Jesus was attracting the masses, Judas saw it. When Jesus was being confronted by the people of, of, of Israel and some of the religious leaders of that time, Judas was somewhere there. When, he, when, 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 when Jesus was preparing, right? When Jesus was preparing to die, okay, or to be put on the cross. And he was explaining to the people or his disciples what he must suffer and go through because Jesus was one of the original disciples. He was there. So he had an intimate and a personal relationship with Jesus that the average person didn't. And I say that because there, and we look through the scripture and at that time when Jesus was physically here, the relationship that he had with his disciples was very different from the relationship that he had with the crowd. He revealed secrets and mysteries to his disciples, but he, he spoke to the crowd in parables. So when someone, when you're that close to someone and, and they reveal their secrets to you, that, that, that tells you that there's some level of trust there, that you are in the inner space, in their inner circle. You understand what I'm saying? When, I, when I'm with my clients, uh, I may talk a little bit about myself, not a whole lot, a little bit about myself, but they don't really know me because that's a professional relationship. So, but they don't, they're not, they don't know my intimate secrets. You understand what I'm saying? I'm there to lead some somebody out of some place that they're in. But so my point is, uh, Jesus knew who his Judas was, but Judas was someone who had an intimate and personal relationship, okay, with Jesus because he was one of the 12 disciples. All right? Judas was also a thief. <laughs> he was over the treasurer. So he would dip a little something every now and again and put it in his pocket. We're going to why people betray you. Uh, he was driven technically by greed. Now, greed is like an ugly, ugly cancer. It never settles with just enough. You get a little one thing, you get away with it, you steal a little more. You get away with it, you steal a little more, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. Greed will expand itself. Now I'm beginning to about why people, why Judas betrayed Jesus. Okay. He was driven by greed. And he handed over Jesus to the enemy. Remember, we said what betrayers do for 30 pieces of silver. But watch this. This indicates the, the type of relationship with had, he had with, with Jesus. He didn't betray Jesus. He he was so greedy. He was so um, 
uh, driven by and, and, and by evil, right? He didn't betray Jesus with a knife. He betrayed him with a kiss. He betrayed him with a kiss. Now that's that's grimy right there. It tells you the 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 what the, the 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 nastiness that dwells when someone is driven by a different spirit. You know, he didn't just go say, hey, there he is. He didn't go behind closed, like he didn't just, he, he went behind the, the back and, and, and betrayed him with the, with the 30 pieces of silver, but he didn't stand afar off and say, see that man right there with the cloak on and those sandals and with the, with the long hair, that's Jesus, go get him. He walks up to him. And this is a biblical kiss, y'all. So in the Bible times, people would greet each other with a kiss, okay? Your friend with a kiss, okay? Not like a kiss on the lips, but a kiss, okay? It's kind of like what we do when you go and shake someone's hand. So he's so, you know, so he's driven by such evilness. He smiles and he gives him a kiss. Come on, y'all. So that we've got to ask the question, because you, you maybe have gone through betrayal. You keep saying, why? Why did someone betray me? Let's talk about why. Why do people betray you? Why do they do that? One, they are driven by greed. They're driven by greed. Um, greed, I know you, you know what greed is, but let's, let's define it for the sake of our text here. Greed means an intense desire for something, such as wealth, money, power, uh, position, okay, success, well, their version of success. And uh, one, one of the scriptures calls it the, calls it the deceitfulness of wealth. Okay, not that you can't be wealthy, but the, but when, you, when you're pursuing it from unethical means, that's a different story. And to go about obtaining it or getting it by unethical, immoral, or deceptive means. Judas didn't turn in his two weeks notice. So listen, I don't want to start a business. I think I'm going to go try to get wealthy. He did, obviously, he didn't do that. He saw he was an opportunist. And he saw the influence, the power, the platform, and the people that Jesus was able to attract. And he saw greed behind it. You know, if you track, if you tra attract the masses of people, imagine how much money you can collect. Greed. In my prayer time, when I, when I was betrayed, I asked God, why did these people do this? Greed. It boils down to greed. So listen to this. Withholding information is the same as lying about information. Withholding information is the same as lying about information. This is why I said, we didn't, we didn't do anything wrong. Yes, you did. You just you withheld information. Remember the uh, the the couple of Ananias and Sapphirius. Sapphirius. If I pronounce that wrong, y'all just work with me. Um, they sold property, right? It was theirs to sell, and it was theirs to um, to give to the disciples, whichever they want. They could have decided to hold some back for themselves and say, "Hey, we held some back for themselves," but they lied. They came to the disciples with property that they sold and told the disciples or told, uh, the, yeah, told the disciples that they had sold all, all of it. The response was, you have not lied to us. You have lied to the Holy Spirit. It was your property. You could have done what you wanted with it, but you decided to withhold information. You lied. So when people betray you, they just, they, they twist words and they tell half truths. Ananias and Sapphira are people who are driven by the spirit of greed as well. <clears throat> False ambition or selfish ambition. They want something, but they want it for selfish reasons. They, uh, why people trade jealousy or envy? They see you at a position or platform or at, a, uh, at, at, at something that they desire and they, they seek it. They want what you got, but they're not willing to do the work or the process it takes to get there. They want the shortcuts through life. Okay, even desire, they have an evil desire to take what doesn't belong to them by deceptive means. They want to take what does not belong to them by deceptive means. 
okay? It's also a covetous spirit. It, covetousness is when you crave someone else's positions, possessions, or perceived advantage, covetousness. You can't really truly be successful in your own way when you're covetous because you always have your mind uh, on someone else's stuff. Okay, you don't see what you got in your own uh, 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 basket because you're looking at what someone else got in their basket, even though both y'all got a basket. Okay. A poverty or lazy spirit. These are people, they want what they want, but are not willing to work or earn it. They want it cheaply. Okay, they want it quickly. These are the people that have, a, I call it a lacto mentality. They just, they want to show up at a bank account tomorrow. All right. They see your success as a means to the end. You are the only successful person that they actually know. They may know a lot of people, but you're the only one with success that they know. And they see you as a means to an end. All right. These are people who are only around you because of what they can get or benefit from you. Let me say it again. These are people. I don't know why my lighting who are only around you because of what they can get from you or the benefits of being in your presence. I had someone recently, the Lord spoke to me, said, you gotta be careful. Those people are only around you because of the benefits of being in your presence. You know, they know, they know that you're successful. They know that you're successful in business. They know that you're successful in life. Maybe um, for those who are married, like they see you with a, success, with a successful marriage. If someone can be jealous and envious of you for any reason, Okay, for any reason. They see being your presence as an opportunity of advancement. They have no intentions of seeking their own opportunity to, of, of advancement. They see being in your presence as an opportunity, not, not, not who you are, being in your presence. They really don't like you. Sometimes they don't, they don't really like you as, I'm sorry, let me make sure this is my other office phone is turned off. Give me one minute here. Um, they really don't like you as a person but they see being in your presence as an opportunity. They have an unhealthy desire for position, for platform and title, and they will seek it by unethical means. Okay, now we can get, we can go on and on and on, but most of the time someone betrays you, sees you in a certain light, they see them in a negative light and they are going to pursue something from you or put you in a vulnerable, vulnerable position so they can try to take from you what belongs to you. All right, okay. So let's talk about now, what should you do? What should you do? Okay, recognize it for what it is. Don't try to figure it out. When I say, don't try to rationalize it out. You know, you have, you get, I've given you a great foundation of why, but I know for me, like one of the things that when I was uh, betrayed by the people who did me really dirty, my mind kept thinking over and over again, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why? And I know the scriptures, all things work together. Why did this, why would you treat me? And I don't know. And I don't understand what did I ever do to these people? And this is just, it was just shocking. I almost feel like a knife in your, in your, in your chest, you know, but eventually you, you get to a place when you're healing, when you're healing through the process, you get to the, uh, you get to the a place where you accept not really fully knowing all the details of, of the why, all right? If you try to confront them, I said this again, uh, if you try to confront them, someone who betrayed you and, the, and God has not really dealt with, well, maybe God has been dealing with their heart, but they're not receptive to the voice of God. They're not gonna be receptive to the voice of you, uh, your, your voice. Okay, I'm gonna say it again. If they are not receptive to the voice of God, that convicts them or condemns, condemns them, they're not gonna be receptive to your voice or to you, the person they betrayed, okay? So um, again, when we try to rationalize, you try to like, you think you know the person, so you, you just wanna have, I just wanna have a conversation, right? You say, I just wanna have a conversation because I'm, I'm trying to understand what so that you may not be able to understand. Um, they will deny it. They will say it was a misunderstanding. They will try to justify it or they will imply that you knew something that you technically didn't know, okay? That you, you knew something that you technically didn't know. They never said anything to you, never told you the whole truth because they, they intentionally left out information 
and is uh, on a, and are looking to you and trying to say you knew something. I had someone did me real dirty, right? And I was confronted. They kept saying, "I knew, I knew." I, I'm like, "Okay, so you 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 were able to tell me all these details, or this, 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 and this, but you just had to leave out that one major detail. It's like really, really major." And then you say, "I knew, I know nothing." Betrayers, okay? Betraying, which when you are betrayed, sometimes it comes uh, so unexpectedly. That's another reason why it hurts so bad. Betrayal is never an overnight thing. Remember that it, it may feel suddenly to you, the person who's been betrayed, but it's never an overnight thing. It is a seed that has been in them and growing for a while. By the time it gets to you, it is revealing to you the character of the person, but it's been there all along. You know, no one wakes up one morning and says, I'm going to betray you. They start slowly looking at you. They, they observe you. They see you. They say, hmm. They don't, they, when, when, they, when that seed of, of dissension and that evilness first comes to them, they're not going to say, oh, I'm going to go betray them. I'm going to go do this. It just, it's a thought that, that, that rumor and, and it grows and it's like a seed. And again, by the time that thing comes to you, they've already planned this without your participation, without your knowledge, without, without your willingness uh they intentionally planned to do what they were going to do but it never happens overnight it's always comes with things they were plotting and planning all along okay so you the other thing how do you what should you do acknowledge your pain before the father remember we have a father who sits high he's in heaven but Jesus understands the things that we have gone through and the things that we could, he's not some statue sitting somewhere in the corner that you, that you rub, you know, he's not a, a man in, in, in fold with his hand, uh, hands folded and his legs crossed. He was there. He understands what it's like to be betrayed. He understands the pain of being rejected. He understands the pain of, 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 of the things that we go through. And it's one thing to talk with somebody and they have, they're oblivious to your, to life. It's another thing when you talk to somebody and they have a true understanding, but we have a God, the father we, that we can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but he is acquainted and he understands the things that we have gone through. That's a wonderful thing. Okay. The pain, listen, this is what I learned. And this is, I'm going to tell you this because I know, you know, we're raised in church and we want, we, you know, a lot of times I said, let's up raised in church and we want immediate deliverance. And that's, if, if that's, you know, that's, that's one form of deliverance. A really tried and true deliverance takes takes a little bit of time. But some, oftentimes when you've been betrayed, the pain does not necessarily go away right away. Now, it's not, going, it's not supposed to sit there a lifetime, but you may have to sit in the pain and slowly heal from it slowly, depending upon the type of betrayal and type of relation that you had. It's a pain that you keep, you acknowledge before the father. Okay, with the exception of married people, Okay, with the exception of married people. Okay, I said exception. Okay, there are oftentimes when you have been betrayed by someone, uh, you have to oftentimes heal away from them. You know, it doesn't mean you can't heal with them in your presence, but oftentimes you may have to heal uh, being away from them, their, their, their uh, the presence, your, their presence. Okay, it just helps you. It helps you a lot to be able to build up your internal strength. Doesn't mean you'll never see them again, but sometimes you just have to heal away from them. Now in marriage, that's a different doozy for a different time. But in marriage, uh, you and your husband or you and your spouse, excuse me, like if you're a woman, you're married to a man and you're a man, you're married to a woman. Uh, you often have to walk through the healing process together. But we still recommend that the spouse that was maybe cheated on or something like that, that that individual has their own therapist to go through. But also when you're working together, uh, we the, the purpose of counseling is to get you back in alignment together, okay? But you may have to um, not necessarily leave their presence in order to heal, you, you know? So that, that's kind of self-explanatory. Once again, what should you do? Process your pain in therapy. Process your pain in therapy. It's a wonderful healing place. Determine to forgive even when it hurts. Even, and it is going to hurt. It does hurt. Come on now. We, we just, you know, it hurts. I would definitely recommend, I read a book that was really, really good by Lisa Turquoise. And uh, if I pronounce her name wrong, um, she wrote a book called Forgiving What You Can't Forget. Really amazing book. Forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation. I've always said that. Um, sometimes your people's character does not change. 
you know, the people that really did me dirty, when I, I had to take inventory of my interactions with the same person over and over again. And um, I forgive, but it's like that, it's like someone has constantly got some drama going on. The last betrayal was the final betrayal. It wasn't like the only time. And there's sometimes when people's character does not change, you got to make a decision to do life without them. You don't have to, if you, if you choose to be in their presence, but there's some people that got to feel your absence. And there's some people that life is, and God is telling us that they are not for us. Okay. So forgiveness does not always mean reconciliation, but forgiveness does heal. Ask God, what, what is he teaching me? Sometimes God allows the pain that we go through to birth uh, a new anointing, a new power, a new authority out of us. Okay, so ask God, why, what should I learn? You know, what should I learn in this situation? What are you teaching me? I definitely encourage you to read, obviously, Life of David, Psalms. He, he so eloquently, eloquently puts um, his pain into paper and still learned and still taught us how to worship and praise God. Um, so y'all know I love David. But if, if, if you want to hone in on certain scriptures, I would definitely recommend um, reading Psalms 35, 36, and 37. Okay, Psalm 35. I read, it, read them in order. Psalm 35, Psalm 36, and then Psalm 37. Okay, set clear and healthy boundaries if you have to be around that person. All healthy relationships have healthy boundaries. Okay, healing is something you must commit to over and over again. So what happens when you're on your healing journey because the pain of betrayal is so real, you may not necessarily heal it from it right away. And so there are times that will come up. You may have a trigger. You may uh, see the person's face. You may have a mutual friend who acts about the person who betrays you and, and you don't want to necessarily talk about it, but you're going to be triggered. And that's when you have to make a decision. Not to sit there and ruminate, well, should have, could have, would have, who, who, and what happened but to go back to your prayer closet and say, God, this is painful, but I'm making a decision. I have to heal. Okay. Healing is something that you must commit to. You can decide not to. I've counseled people who are stuck in the, in the pain of the betrayal and they end up becoming very bitter, very angry, very resentful because of what was done to them. You're not in control also all the time what was done to you. You are in control of how you heal and how you respond. Okay, and healing is the children's bread. That simply means healing does belong to the life of the believer. Okay. All right. Um, worship in your pain. The best thing you can do is just stop and begin to worship. God, you are faithful. God, you are faithful. Remember, something beautiful is getting ready to come out of this. Something beautiful is coming out of this. Psalm 61 3 says, He turned my, let me read this correctly. Psalm 61 um, 3 says, One of the things that Jesus will do was he will console those who mourn. So when you, when you recognize, when, when it's finally apparent to you, the character of someone that's betrayed you, there's a mourning process, process that you will go through. You can mourn someone that is still alive, but you will mourn the relationship. You can mourn what you thought would be. You can mourn the life that you thought you would have. You can mourn different aspects of the person, okay? But God says he came in Isaiah 61, one of the, one of the assignments of Jesus, one of the things that Jesus did was to comfort those or console those who mourn. He says to give beauty for ashes. So when I feel like everything is broken, God is going to give me beauty. He's talking about a divine exchange, the oil of joy, joy for mourning. So I don't have to mourn forever. I am going, we are going to experience joy. The garment of praise for the spirit of happiness is a divine exchange that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. When you get through the pain of betrayal, there is such a solidity that you're solid in your faith. You are solid in who you are and God, you are unstoppable, but it is a process and a test of every believer. Okay. It is a test. All right. All right. A few more things and we're done. Recognize that all grief that you are grieving, okay? You are grieving and there's a process to grief. There are different stages to grief. One is denial, one is anger, 
when it's bargaining or per, I call it personalization when you've experienced betrayal, bargaining was maybe if you try to figure it out or compromise, well, maybe it's not that bad in your own mind. Maybe, well, maybe, you know, that maybe I didn't really mean it. I don't, th- you know, because sometimes the, 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 the action of the betrayer is so egregious. You're just like, well, maybe it's not what I thought. Did I really, did I look at that wrong? Or you may personalize it. What is wrong with me? That they thought, what did I do to them? That they thought that they'll, you see what I'm saying? Um, you ha- you may have a time of just being really depressed, but then you get to a place of acceptance. Now I tell my clients all the time, acceptance and agreeing are not the same thing. Agreeing is when you're saying, yes, I agree with how you treated me. We're not, we're not, we're not saying that. We're not going to agree with, 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 with pain and betrayal. But what, when I, when you accept it, it's like your heart comes to a place of, okay, this really did happen and is what it is. And I choose to move on. You don't, you don't agree with it, but you're not necessarily, um, but you accept that it really did happen. Grief is not a lifetime. Now you can stay stuck in the lifetime if you, if, if, if that's what you choose to do, but it's, it's, it's not a lifetime thing. You shouldn't be grieving 10 years over a betrayal that happened 10 years ago. That's, that's not a healthy form of grief. There's a healthy way to grieve. Okay. Be intentional about not allowing um, bitterness to take root. Be intentional about not allowing bitterness to take root. Don't ruminate. So ruminate is when you, we, a thought comes to your mind, you think about it over again, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why? It's like you're meditating on the wrong thing. You're going over and over again. You're replaying the conversations in your mind and you're, and you're justifying yourself and you're, and you're trying to, you tell us people off and you're not, you haven't not even talked to the person, but you, in your own mind, you're, you're replaying what happened and what you should have said, why you didn't say it this way. And next time you're going to say it that way. And when you meet them, this is what you're going to say. Just stop it. Tell your mind to stop it. Keep praying. It's going to lift. The pain is going to lift. You don't look like what you've been through, but you know, but, but, but the pain will lift. Keep praying until it lifts. You will get better. Listen, you will get better. You will heal. Sometimes this is what I've learned is sometimes God has to uh, expose us to our betrayers. He must expose who they really are. Okay. Because you would bring them into your promise based upon loyalty. So God has to expose to you the people who are not really for you. I know that's the case for me. I would have uh, the people that really did me dirty. I would have done anything. I would have took them into everything God has for me. I mean, I would have really done it. I mean, they would have blessed their whole life, but God wasn't calling them. He was calling me. And sometimes out of loyalty and obligation, we will take people into the thing that God has prepared for us and wants for us to do, even though God has not called them, he's called you. That was good. (laughs) God will send people into your life. God will send people into your life people that are for you he will disconnect you from people and put people in your life that are supposed to be there okay god will do that okay god will do that now let's read another scripture here um rejection sometimes is god's protection sometimes when we have when you have been rejected it is really god's protection psalms 119 71 this is what david came to say he said you know what even though it's painful it was good that i was afflicted that i may learn your ways when you get through this the 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 your your relationship with god is so profound it is absolutely beautiful but you had to get through it to get to it all right all right last few things here second Corinthians 2, 8 and 9. It says, for listen, sometimes the people that had agendas against you, if they had really known how they was really setting you up for God <laughs> to move in your life, they would have left you alone. So that gives me to my my text, 1 Corinthians, excuse me, the second chapter, the eighth verse, and it reads, New King James Version says, who of which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they known, they would have not have crucified the Lord of God. So if they would have known, if if, if the enemy that was really using uh, 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 Judas would have known what 
type of ramifications in the positive realm that would have happened as a result of Jesus dying on the cross, they would not have done it. They would have left them, him alone. I know we're not dying on the cross for anybody, but if the people who came against you really have known, would have known that they just set you up for a massive blessing to be used of God in major ways, to walk in the power and the anointing and the authority that God has called you to, they wouldn't, they would have left you alone a long time ago. They would have just said, leave her alone or she come to her. Okay, because remember, said they motivated by jealousy. It's the last thing a jealous person wants to do is see you blessed. Okay, but verse nine says, "But it is re- written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, nor hath it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love Him." For God reveals them through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Sometimes God hides it from your enemies. What the real intentions is, but he's setting you up for blessing. He really, truly is. Listen, understand that you are coming out better. Regardless of the pain, I understand we've experienced pain, but you are coming out better, powerful, anointed, successful, more money in your pocket. You're coming out better. Romans 8, 28 says, for we know all things. What things? Some things, Samaria, no, all things. A little bit of things, no, Samaria, all things. All things work together for the good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. It's working together for your good. Father, I thank you for the people that have watched this live today. I thank you for their lives. I thank you for um, their hearing the word. I thank you, God, that like David, we know it was good that we were afflicted. So So we may learn of you. Now, God, we bring our pain before you and we we recognize that the pain of betrayal is real, but your anointing, your power, your peace is more real than that. Lord, I speak now to each and every person under the sound of my voice, and I declare now the, the healing power and the healing virtue be with them even now. The peace of God be with them now, the joy of overflowing, and I declare and decree this is just a divine setup in your name. All right, y'all. Check me out, www.samariacovert.com. Follow me on all social medias. If you want to know a little more about my, about my counseling practice, that is www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com. I also have a consulting business, www.transformingchristianleaders.com. We'll be back another day, another time, another place. Oh, my next my next one is going to be about Christian narcissists. It's going to be good, y'all. So make, t- make sure you are subscribed. Bye. Thumbnail.